The learning objectives of training model 2.1 is to know the required weather data, which are the conditions at the upper boundary. Required weather data consist of reference evapotranspiration, minimum and maximum temperature, rainfall and mean annual CO2. From meteorological data recorded in a local weather station, reference evapotranspiration can be computed. It expresses the evaporating power of the atmosphere and it determines the rate of transpiration and evaporation. Aquacrop has a built-in ET node calculator which computes reference evapotranspiration from meteorological data. Next to ET node, Aquacrop also requires minimum and maximum air temperature. It is required to calculate growing degree days which determines the speed of crop development. There are also cold and heat stresses in aquacrop which affects crop yield and biomass production. ET node and minimum maximum temperature can be entered as daily, 10 daily or monthly data. However, aquacrop will need daily data since aquacrop works simulates with a daily time step. Inside aquacrop there are procedures which convert at runtime, 10 day or monthly data to daily data. The larger the time aggregation of the imported data, the less reliable is the outcome. Next to ET node minimum and maximum temperature, aquacrop requires also rainfall data to update daily its soil water balance and to simulate soil water stresses. Also here, rainfall data can be entered 10 daily or monthly. And once again, procedures in aquacrop will convert it to daily data. However, to do accurate simulations of the crop response to water stresses, daily rainfall data is really needed. Finally, aquacrop also requires the mean annual CO2 concentration because it affects the biomass production and the crop transpiration. It can consist of recorded past concentrations or also of projected future concentrations. These are useful when we want to simulate climate change scenarios. After the overview of the required weather data, let's have a closer look at the climate file. Aquacrop contains a database in which climatic data is stored. On the one hand, we have the evaporating power of the atmosphere, which is stored in an ET node file. We also have temperature files, TNX files, which contains the minimum and maximum air temperature. Next, we have rainfall files, PLU files, which contain the rainfall data. And finally, there are CO2 files which contain the long record of mean annual CO2 concentration. These four files contain the climatic data. Finally, there is a climate file, which is a cleave file, which does not contain any data, but just tells which is the ET node, the temperature, the rainfall and the CO2 file linked to that particular station. In the top panel of the main menu, climatic data is specified. Clicking on the climate button and the user gets access to the management panel of the climate file. By clicking on the select create climate file button, we get access to the database where the climate files are listed. One can select a climate file or create one. So let's select the Tunis climate file. By clicking on the icon, we can display the climate file. Or when we click on the climate button, we can also display and update the climate characteristics by clicking on this button. 
This is the screen where climatic data is displayed. It consists of a tabular sheet with the description telling which is the rainfall file, the ET node file, the temperature file, and the selected CO2 file. In the other tabular sheet, we can visualize the climatic data. In the rainfall tab, we can see the daily rainfall. We can also plot it as mean monthly data. Here it is plotted together with the ET node and half of the ET node. Or we can see the variation of the rainfall data over the years. We can note that rainfall drastically changed from one year to the other. In the ET node tabular sheet, we see the ET node data. Once again, it can be plotted as mean monthly data or as yearly data. The variation from one year to the other is much smaller than the variation of the rainfall. In the temperature tab sheet, the maximum and minimum air temperature are displayed. Mean monthly, in light blue we have the maximum temperature, while in dark blue we have the minimum temperature. We can also display it as growing degree days. That is of course only valid for the selected crop, which is in this case wheat. Finally, in the CO2 tab sheet, we see the variation of the CO2 concentration over the different years, from 75 up to 2015. In the last point of this training module, we discuss the access to historical data. Data is collected from the local weather stations or from the meteorological surface of the country or of the region. In the absence of weather data, one can try also to find the data on online platforms. One of such platforms is the NASA platform. Unfortunately, it has not recorded data, but it has data which is derived from satellite imagery. This might compromise the accuracy for crop water modeling. Another platform is the one of NOAA. It contains historical recorded weather data, but there is a lot of data missing. Another platform is the one of the weather underground. It has data of more than 170,000 weather stations.